Hello, welcome to this third video in our discrete calculus sequence. In the first two videos, we introduced the idea of discrete calculus working with sequences instead of functions and the derivative being the forward difference instead of the continuous derivative. We went through a bunch of different sequences and worked on what the, how the forward difference operates on those sequences. And this is the next level, being able honestly to work backwards. We have the integration for continuous calculus. This is going to be how we work backwards in discrete calculus. It's going to be having summation. And so the fundamental theorem of discrete calculus is built off of having a sum and being able to decipher how to find that sum and its connection to the forward difference. If you have the sum of the forward difference, that's like having the integral of the derivative. It's like the fundamental theorem of regular calculus. This is the fundamental theorem of discrete calculus, where we then find out who the inside is the forward difference of, and that's finding the anti-forward difference. And then we just evaluate at these endpoints, but be very careful. Those endpoints are not your standard endpoints. It's not the beginning and the ending of the summation counter. It's the beginning counter taken away from the ending counter plus one and we got it really skilled at being able to find anti-forward differences but first let's take a look at why the b plus one is there a forward difference is just going to be the the u sub n plus one minus u sub n and plug it in the first three terms and plug it in the last couple terms we get to see how this telescopes okay plug in a plug in a plus one plug in a plus two, plug in b minus one, the one right before the end, and then plug in b, and watch the cancellation, watch the telescoping. Your first cancellation, u sub a plus one will cancel with the minus u sub a plus one. And then u sub a plus two is gonna cancel. u sub a plus three is gonna cancel. We didn't write that next term, but it's gonna cancel. Who's the last term to cancel? u sub b cancels the use of a plus three cancels use of b minus one will also cancel we have one surviving term in the beginning one surviving term at the end these are the last two and everything else is gone our sum has telescoped down to just be two terms and to write it in the order that we have it we're going to have the the use of b plus one and from that we're going to take away the use of a so it's the fundamental theorem of discrete calculus and we're going to use it after we study how to really work with the forward difference in reverse, the anti-forward difference. Okay, so let's make a list. We know that the forward difference on n is equal to 1. The forward difference on 2 to the n is just 2 to the n. It gets left alone. The forward difference on r to the n is r to the n times the quantity of r minus 1, which we can just take that constant and divide by it. And if you have a constant outside of a sum of forward difference, you can bring it inside. And so um, r sub n is equal to the forward difference on r sub n over r minus 1. 1 over n times the quantity of n plus 1 is equal to the forward difference on minus 1 over n. And then we have our n factorial. The forward difference on n factorial is n factorial times n. And our falling powers. The forward difference on n to the k, bring down the k, and then take away 1 from the falling power. But like we did with the r's there, we're going to divide by k, and then we're going to incorporate into the forward difference, and then we're going to up all the k's by 1, so it looks kind of standard. If you see an n falling k, just know it is the forward difference of n falling k plus 1 over k plus 1, like an antiderivative uh, power rule in reverse. Okay, so you're going to be looking for the left-hand sides inside of summations you're going to replace them with the right hand side and then you're going to employ the fundamental theorem of discrete calculus okay um, when it comes to polynomials we want to first write them in terms of falling powers all right for n we already know n written as a falling power is n falling power one uh, let's work for n falling two we know that's n times n minus one who multiplies out to be n squared minus n, replace the n with n falling 1, and add it over to the other side. n squared is n falling 2 plus n falling 1. 
All right, great. And one more, n falling three. n times n minus one times n minus two. Multiply it out. Oh, we're adding those guys over to the other side. Sorry about that. Uh, three n squared is added over. Uh, two n is subtracted over. We're solving for n cubed in that step there. And now we're placing everybody. Distributing and grouping, we end up with n cubed being equal to n falling three plus three n falling two plus n falling one. These are facts that you can like write on a note sheet or something. Okay, why do we care? Why do we need to write n in terms of falling powers, n powers to the regular polynomial in terms of falling powers? Why? Well, there's these famous counting formulas that we can use uh, to start out. So n is n falling 1. Great. And n falling 1 is the forward difference on n falling 2 over 2. The fundamental theorem of discrete calculus then says, well, you just got to take what's, what you're the, what's inside the forward difference, replace it with k plus 1, and then replace it with 1, and subtract. But 1 falling 2 is 0. And what is k plus 1 falling to? That's k plus 1 times k. And that's it. That's your formula. Your formula for adding up the first k integers is k times k plus 1 over 2. Hopefully you've seen that formula before. Maybe not proved in this way using falling polynomials, falling powers, but um, that's it. Okay. All right. Let's do it again for the sum of the n squares. Replace n squared with what it is in terms of falling powers, n falling 2 plus n falling 1. We can break that summation up into 2, and we can anti-forward difference both of those, add 1, divide by the same thing, so we have n falling 3 over 3, forward difference on that, n falling 2 over 2, forward difference on that, and then we just apply the fundamental theorem of discrete calculus to both of these and we replace the n with k plus 1, and then replace it with the 1. We have k plus 1 falling 3 over 3, minus 1 falling 3 over 3. k plus 1 falling 2 over 2, minus 1 falling 2 over 2. And But we know 1 falling 2, 1 falling 3, those guys are zeros. k plus 1 falling 3, k plus 1 times k, times k minus 1. And we saw from above, k plus 1 falling 2 is just k plus 1 times k. All right, those zeros are on, gone. And we recognize that these two have k in common, k plus 1 in common. Let's factor it out. In the first term, we're left with the k minus 1 over 3. Second term, just 1, and it's over 2. So double everybody in the first fraction, triple the 1 half, top and bottom. Distribute. 2k minus 2, but then plus the 3 gives us 2k plus 1. This is the famous formula for the sum of the first k squares. 2k plus 1 times k plus 1 times k all over 6. Okay. All right, great. Uh, this video is getting to be a little bit long. Let's go ahead and end it right now. Uh, we'll have another video where we look at uh, more of this. My name is Nakai Rimmer. Help with, happy to help guide you through this journey. I can be reached at calcoach.com. Please like and subscribe. Comment down below. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.